Hello everyone. This video is going to get a bit heated. We're back to another discourse topic. If you know my amino, I did do a poll, excuse me, um, on what Ara's video topics you wanted me to you wanted me to do videos on. For the next video, I'm also doing a Q&A because that was the second most voted option in that poll. So if you have any questions that you want to ask about asexuality and aromaticism, I will do the best I can. Um, please comment them down below. So let's ask the question. Are aromaticism and asexuality on a spectrum? Well, if you want to know my answer, like, straight up, no. Like, they're not. I just don't think, there's no proof of it. Asexuals have no sexual attraction and aromaticists have no romantic attraction, so someone who still has romantic or sexual attraction cannot be ace or arrow. That's my opinion straight up, so if you only wanted to see that, then okay, goodbye. But if you want to know a bit more, then you can keep on watching. Yeah, um, so we're going to look into uh, my video on arrow ace terms. I will put a card here. Allosexual is someone who experiences sexual attraction or who is not asexual. And aromantic is someone who experiences romantic attraction or is not aromantic. So also it says that on the on the aromantic wiki page on Avon Wiki, which is like Avon's like wiki page. Um, so I'll link that down below and put it here. Pause the video if you want to read about that. On the Avon homepage, by the way, Avon is the Asexuality, Visibility and Education Network. On their homepage, if you type in asexuality and you click on that website, because their website's asexuality.org, you'll find this. As you can see, it says an asexual is someone who doesn't experience sexual attraction, or along those lines. They're saying what I'm saying. So now we got that down. Right, so I'll put a picture up here of what I saw on Google when I touched up asexual spectrum identities. I have no words really. So that's what they all mean. You can pause to read them. So yeah, you can kind of see the problem hopefully. If you can't, let me clarify this for you. None of these labels describe your actual sexual or romantic orientation because your sexual and romantic orientations are both determined by what gender you are if you are not bi or a sash arrow and on which sex sash genders you are attracted to, if any. So, for example, I'm heterosexual because I'm a guy and I'm attracted to women only. I can't be a lesbian because lesbians are women who are attracted to other women. And yes, he, him, lesbians are not valid. Sexual attraction, like, sexual attraction is like desi the desire to have sex with someone because you are attracted to that person, essentially. And romantic attraction, from what I know, is basically the same thing but with romantic attraction. So you have romantic attraction to someone and you want to be in a relationship with them, usually. If you're grey, sexual romantic, demisexual romantic, lift sexual romantic, fray sexual romantic, you are not asexual or aromantic at all. Like, you ex if you experience sexual attraction, you're not asexual, and if you experience romantic attraction, you're not aromantic, as we have discussed in this video and in my last video about arrow-ace terms. I don't care if your feelings get hurt by that, I feel like a lot of people with feelings get hurt by that, over people who want to include everyone, even though they should not be included. And number two, people who are not actually ace or arrow. Like, I'm sorry that you cannot be grey, grey sexual and asexual, it's just not a thing. I do want to clarify that this is not me hating on grey sexuals and demisexual, or people want to use those labels, I'm not hating on them. I do not like the label specifically, and I do not like them associating themselves with being ace or arrow when they are not. That's my gripe with all of this. There's also the whole thing that that grey sexual and demisexual and romantic and apparent like apparently like being grey sexual is abnormal when it's not, like it's just not. There are many people who don't have a sexual attraction that much or romantic attra attraction that much. And same with demisexuality. So she only falls in love with the with the same sex when she has built an emotional bond with someone. 
she's demi homo romantic and also like as i've said with how sexual attraction and romantic attraction like orientations are determined by saying oh i'm demisexual doesn't really tell anyone what your actual or sexual orientation is They're like okay but like are you gay are you bi are you straight are you you know what i mean so yeah like my best friend is demi homo romantic she's not just demi romantic she's demi homo romantic I don't really mention it outside of asexual, aromantic communities because it's just not important. So yeah, being Frey, Demi and Grey are normal Frey sexuals. People are sleeping around and hooking up with people and one night stands and I'm personally not shaming that. Like, if you want to have sex with someone that you've just met, like, go for it. As long as you're being consensual and you use protection when appropriate, I do not care. A lot of these people could be described as free sexual if they're just, they only want one night stands with someone or you're attracted, they're attracted to someone but they don't want any further connection with someone. They're not here being like, oh, I'm free sexual, I'm abnormal, I'm like, like, I know that they're not all trying to be like uru special. They're trying to just try and be abnormal in some way, even if they're not doing it to be cool, but they're just doing it because... I don't know, I don't know, I don't see what's wrong with being allosexual or alloromantic. Like, there's nothing wrong with it, I'm allosexual. But yeah, the only one of those four labels that isn't really normal is lift sexual, lift romantic. So like, you want to have sex with people and have a sexual relationship with people, but as soon as they like you back, you're like, oh no, 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 like, that doesn't make any sense. And same with Lift Romantic, um, like you want to be in a relationship with people and you have a crush on someone but they just go away as soon as someone comes in who they like and they're like, yep, I want to date you, like, what? My unpopular opinion, but I feel like it's because they just have commitment issues and maybe they have trauma or maybe they just have commitment issues and I'm not shaming people who have who have commitment issues or anything like that. We should not really stigmatise mental illnesses, physical conditions, that sort of thing. It's really stupid and it and then and it convinces people not to go through treatment and it's really and it's just really sad. I'm not saying you have to date everyone you like, because you can't, but there's some sort of disconnect there that I feel like a label is not gonna solve for you. I don't understand why people will use a label just so they can't go through treatment or anything like i've seen people i've i've seen that apparently you're still aromantic even if you were aromantic because of trauma a quick side note just because you went through trauma doesn't mean you're aromantic or asexual okay like if you want to get personal i have a family member that was raped twice by two men when she was younger and She's still straight. You know, you want to know why? Because she went to counsellors and talked about it. Like, she's not asexual just because of that. Like, unless you were, like, asexual, that like, you had no sexual attraction even before you, the incident, like, regardless of the incident, then you can't, then you're not automatically asexual. Like, I don't, I don't, like, it's just aphobic because, like, a path, because asexuality and aromanticism are not caused by trauma. Like, just because you have trauma doesn't mean you're asexual or aromantic. Like, it's such a horrible, it's such a horrible misconception. And it's like, it's on, it's on par with, with people saying, oh, you've got a hormonal problem, you need to see someone, you need to see a doctor. Like, no, it's aphobia. Like, stop it. Like, seriously, stop. It's okay to, to go, f it's, it's okay if you've been through trauma, and it's really sad, obviously, but you should try and talk to people about, about your issues, and not use a label, because it's not going to solve them for you. Anyway, so these four labels are all allo. So you guys are not aromantic or asexual whatsoever. In fact, including you guys in... Asexuality and aromanticism is, aromanticism is aphobic in itself because allies can't be aromantic or asexual. Um, other terms we have are idem romantic, QP romantic. They both mean that you are aromantic but you want romantic attraction or romantic relationship. 
You're still aromantic. Um, a protisexual, can't say this right, I'll put it here. Um, your sexual pulse, asexual, why do you need a different label for that? It's kind of aphobic if you're saying that other asexuals cannot be sexual pulsed because they can. I am romance repulsed, but that doesn't mean every romantic person is repulsed. Like Some people are more positive about romance and some people are more neutral about it. Like, there's also qua, like qua sexual, qua romantic. Quick French lesson for you: the word qua means what in French? This is just to seem more cool and special. Like, it just means what sexual? Like what? And then there's WTF romantic. Yes, that's right. What the fuck romantic? I'm sorry, but if someone tells me that they're what the fuck romantic, I'm not gonna take them seriously because. Why would you use that term? Like, you can just see you questioning. Just say, why is questioning a bad thing? Same with abrosexual, abromantic. Just say you're questioning. And you can't go from asexual to heterosexual and bisexual to homosexual. You, no, it's not a real thing. Like, you just can't, you can't tell me that's a real thing because it's just not possible. It's also, it's also homophobic and biophobic and just like hetero, like, it's, it's phobic to all the sexual orientations because your sexuality cannot change. That's what LGBT people have been fighting for for ages, saying that your sexuality can't change and it shouldn't need to change. Conversion therapy has been proven to be unsuccessful. So you're just... That part alone is just... It's just disgusting, really. I'm not just here making this video because... Well, these labels are just silly. I'm here because they actually cause a problem. I've been like silenced and banned for all this shit, it's so annoying, even, because, even though it's so problematic. There's also agosexual, which is basically where you get have a sex drive but you're asexual, which is a thing. Again, asexuals can have a sex drive. It's, it seems like you're saying asexuals cannot have a sex drive when they can. It does make you a different orientation. There's also placosexual, I'll put it here. I had to look this up again because I did not remember what it means, but basically it means that you are sexually attracted to people, but you don't mind if they're not reciprocated. Okay? That's literally just being a decent person and not being a rapist. Like, <laughs> What? Are there that many rapists in the world that we have to have a separate label for people uh, that is to do with asexuality for some- It's not to do with asexuality. I'm heterosexual. I have a high sex drive. I I would want to have sex with women, but if a woman tells me she does not want to have sex with me whatsoever, I will respect Hopefully you can see how problematic this is. If you don't see a problematic, there's a whole sexuality about not being a rapist and being a decent person and that's to do with asexuality. You've got a problem. Like, I'm sorry, but you've got a problem. But the main reason I think that all of this is happening is because it's this hyper-inclusion. Oh, we need to be inclusive of every- like, I am very for being inclusive of different people when it's necessary. Like, like for example, I'm a volunteer, a very big charity in the UK. The company is very inclusive of all religions, races, genders, sexualities, etc. That is being good kind of inclusive. The bad kind of inclusive is where we just include everyone. Think about it this way, okay? I saw a really good thing on Tumblr, which I'll link down below. But imagine that you make a club which is about which is about sports, about football, okay? You made a club because you are a big fan of football and you're all football fans. Then one of the people in your club, one of your friends, is like, hey, I've got a friend who likes basketball. Can they join your club? And you're like, yeah, sure. So they come in, right? Then they'll be like, well, if we allow basketball fans to come in, why don't we ask hockey fans and tennis fans and table tennis fans? And then it just becomes a sports club. And then they're like, what well, can I just bring my friend who doesn't really like to watch his anime? Then they're brought in. And then other people are brought in, like... And then it doesn't become a football club anymore. And just a random club. There's no meaning to it anymore. Okay, like, if we have all these labels that are all asexual, especially ones that where you can experience attraction, then... It doesn't have any meaning anymore. A lot of aphobes will use this to their advantage and be like, well, 
not all asexuals are not attracted to people. So that means that if you don't sleep with me, then you're just being a dick. Or if you don't have been in a relationship with me, you're just being a dick. And I know, watch my video about Ace and Aries being LGBT. I have statistics in there in the description. You can read all about that. But it's it's a big problem. That's like the extreme end of it, but it's definitely possible. A lot of asexuals and aromantics can be pressured into having sex or being in a relationship. I don't want to be pressured into a relationship just because someone's grey romantic and they're saying they're aromantic, even though they're not aromantic and because they experience romantic attraction. I don't hate grey romantics, I don't hate grey sexuals, but I do not want to be seen as the same as them because it will make it will make some aphobes who are right assholes think, well, well that person is aromantic and has romantic attraction still, so why can't this person be in a relationship with me who is aromantic? He must also have romantic attraction and I'm it is a very big problem. Maybe it isn't for you, but like well done, it's not a big problem for you, but to me it is and to other people it is. I know people who have a problem with this. And it isn't just like one other person, it's a lot of different people with different backgrounds. That's basically it. I'm sorry that I'm a bit annoyed in this video, but it is something that really annoys me about the Arrow Ace community. And it's why I don't like them as much. Hopefully the Aloes watching will now know that I personally don't think asexuality and aromaticism are on a spectrum. And, and why it's not and why saying it is can be problematic. Because I feel like having just one perspective doesn't help anyone. Because then you just think of asexuals and aromatics as just one type of person. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more content, subscribe, like this video, tell me what you think about it. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you later. Goodbye.